All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. This is Wolf's Guard episode three. Uh, these next two episodes will be the character highlight for Fearwall, our resident uh, Beastmaster Ranger. And uh, let's do a recap of what happened last time. Last time we did the character highlight arc of Astra, our uh, Dragonborn uh, Arcane Cleric. And uh, we had them, we, uh, the Wolf's Guard encountered uh, an an exiled student of the Mistral Mages, uh, a Basil Duraka, which uh, was able to harness the flow of life essence and transfer uh, life essence through and between different organisms. With that, he's able to heal uh, himself and others by taking away the life essence from plants. At the same time, he's able to use his own life essence and infuse it into plants, uh, giving them uh, life and like a form of sentience. Um, we learned that um, Basil Duraka had like this sort of relationship with one of our other NPCs, Opal, which was Astra's best, which is Astra's best friend. And after defeating uh, Basil, the Wolf's Guard continue on toward uh, to Althalge, the home uh, town of Astra, a, a Hadani province up in the mountains of Exoria, uh, Hadan, and. <clears throat> And uh, we meet her family, and uh, the Wolf's Guard lock up um, uh, Basil in uh, their prison there. And Harubid, um, like, has makes a has starts a business partnership with one of the merchants there, uh, who you know specialize in selling in the selling of pet rocks, uh, and. After a few days of staying there in Althalj, <coughs> Astra visits one of the, the temple shrines and hears the voice of uh, her deity, uh, Mistra, the goddess of magic. Uh, now, uh, we move forward, I'd say, uh, about a few weeks, like a couple of weeks uh forwards or backwards because these character highlights are not um chronological uh but uh, th this event happens uh weeks uh <coughs> before or after what happened with Ast uh in Astra's highlight we find ourselves in the wolf's den the mobile tower of the wolf's guard uh, and the Wolf's Guard are being paid a visit by uh, King Kalamvas and Queen Athena, the king and queen of Kalora, the capital uh, city and kingdom of central Gamaril. Um, uh, so you guys can position yourselves uh, anywhere you like within the tea house. Let's put Katiana there, Yuzadel there, Harubid, wherever. You guys can place yourselves anywhere. Uh, there are uh, the royal guard is also present uh, outside the the wolf's den and along the perimeter here on the on the terrace around the tea house, uh, but they're not important enough for tokens. Um, and Queen Athena, Queen Athena is trying her hand at cooking because. Uh, she finds it very boring <laughs> in Kalora in the kingdom, not being able to really do, uh, like you know, regular things like like this. So she is attempting her hand at cooking, although she's doing it very poorly, but she is doing it with much enthusiasm. Uh, Kalumvas is uh, squatting at one of your uh, tea tables over here, and. Uh, there you go. A few rounds of roleplay, 
as we begin tonight's session. All right. Uh, the first thing that Farewell would do would be to go near Galea. Okay. And ask her, I would like to ask you about that flame that you showed our party a few days ago. Oh, you mean this? I noticed that it seems to follow your command as if it was a, a magical gift of some sort. Oh, well, uh, it, it was a gift. So you see, and then she tells you the story of how when she was a child, she uh, was lost up in the Mistral Peaks. And because of the cold and because of the arduous climb, she needed to find a place. Uh, she needed to find something warm, right? She saw the light of Delphine's flame uh, followed it and uh, decided to light a fire. Now, um, I don't know, I don't think Farewell is familiar with this lore, but Astra is that Delphine's flame, uh, before the instance with Galea when she was a child, would not uh, light anything in, on fire. If a person were to take a torch to Delphine's flame, the torch would not light up, it, it would not produce heat or warmth or whatever. But for some reason, when Galea uh, took a stick into the flame uh, in order to start lighting a fire, the stick uh, lit up and ignited, and the, and the flame provided her with warmth. And when the monks arrived to see what had happened, uh, they were shocked to see that uh, Delphine's flame was responding uh, to this child, the Shatterkai elven child. She explains that story to you, and she explains that it's not, uh, it's not that she controls the flame per se. She explains that the flame is allowing uh, her Galea to uh, to to use it. Uh, it is a gift, as you mentioned, farewell, and she is, and because of this gift, uh, she is alive today. And because of that, she spent most of her life in service uh, at the Mistral Temple. And uh, her whole life, she has just been guarding the flame. And now that the flame does not want to um, leave itself from uh, her blade, uh, she continues to travel with you, the Wolf's Guard, um, seemingly trying to figure out a better place for it. And Firwal will, will thank her for that story, and he will say, Interesting. You seem to be a child of the flame. And yet, I'd like to share, I too, to some extent, have an affinity for fire. You see, this bow that I carry, this flame bow, is a weapon from generation to generation that was passed from the chieftains of our tribe. I've just recently found out from the voice, I cannot explain this very well, but it's the voice of my grandfather that communicates with me through my reverie. And he says, that this is not the final form of this bow, and I am very confused about it. I know that it is powerful. Yes, I feel that it is already powerful, but it, the voice keeps telling me to unlock its power and potential. And so when I saw the gift you have, 
it just reminded me of this charge that I have. And <clears throat> uh, farewell. You you tell the story of your bow, and I assume that you present the bow uh, to her as you're talking about it. Yes. You see in Galea's eyes, like, and this is usual for Galea because she doesn't, you know, she hasn't gone out of the Mistral Temple. Just like wide-eyed, you know, amazement and everything. And you've noticed her eyeing the bow for a while already. <clears throat> But now she she expresses that like, uh, may I? As, as she wants to take the bow and observe it. Uh, Pirwal hands it to her. Okay, cool. Okay, hang on while I grab my food. AFK, go a bit. Where is Haru? The queen is waiting. Haru's ex is here. She <laughs> needs to show this is over. <laughs> Yeah, she needs to show her, you know, how successful she is already. I have my own empire. <laughs> There's Haru. Hello, your ex is here. <laughs> The link to Owlbear is in the chat, by the way, so you can see the map. Like 500k map. What, 500k? Back, guys. <sighs> okay. Uh, testing, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Galea uh, takes your bow. And uh, the more you, as you're telling your story of, like, your grandfather and whatever, uh, she, di- she then... Um, Rem- tries to remember her studies back at the Mistral Temple uh, because they do have books and everything. And then she... <clears throat> oh, she's... <laughs> I'm out of breath because <laughs> I ran. Wait, wait. And then she's like... You're... You're a wild elf, aren't, are you not? You... And the... The tattoos on your body and the way you dress, you're, you're part of the, uh, hang on, before I, before I butcher <laughs> the name, was it Pilin Karn? Yeah, the Pilin Karn type. Right. You're part of the, uh, the Pilin Karn tribe, yes? And that would mean, <gasps> and then the, that moment she realizes, <laughs> it's like, This is the Nadakstanar bow? Yes, that is correct. <gasps> how, how do you know about this heirloom <clears throat> of our tribe? She explains that uh, the Mistral Mages, uh, uh, like a division of theirs, focus on the studying and the, you know, <clears throat> Be uh, like the keeping track of uh, ma- most magical items uh, um, that you know they encounter in the world, and um, the the bowl that you hold with you, uh, y- you know this has a very long history and very uh, <clears throat> uh, a very like unforgettable story to it 
right? And although yeah. the wild elf tribe uh, keep to themselves, and uh, the wild wild elf tribes and the Pilankarn uh, keep to themselves um, um, more often than like several other races and groups, um, there would be times throughout history that uh, the Pilankarn and uh, the bull <clears throat> Uh, would have like some sort of uh, prevalence in history, right? I imagine like um, when uh, Firwell's grandfather, see uh, Fairlock, Fairlock, um, and uh, a, a group of other individuals uh, basically saved Athendor and Tarin from annihilation. <laughs> Like many many years ago, uh, that would be like a very, um, <clears throat> very like a big, like highlight in within uh, mm-hmm. for the story in, of um, the 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 bow. And it's something that the Mistral Mages uh, do not like easily forget. Uh, but it's not all Mistral Mages that know of this because um, it's just that Galea is a total nerd and, you know, when she's not training, she is, you know, like her her head is down and like nose is on like a page of the books of uh, the, the library there at the Mistral Peak. <clears throat> so, yeah. So Pirwal will say that this this is very interesting. So perhaps you can someday help me figure out more about this bow as I journey and hope to discover how it is I can unlock its true potential. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hang on, let me try this. And then she she takes her sword that's like lit up with a delphine's flame. And um are you okay if I try to I don't know what's gonna happen. Just try your best not to destroy my, <laughs> my family's treasure. Uh, and then she kinda like has a worried look and she's like uh, uh, oh yes, of course. And then she tries her gentlest to like um, touch the bow with her uh, blade, and the f- and Delphine's flame <clears throat> begins to creep over the bow. But then uh, the N- Nadaktanar, did I say it right? Nadaktanar, yeah. yeah. Uh, its flames start igniting as well, and they seem to like argue with each other like Delphine's flame and the, the Noctinar flames are like fighting each other and then Galea retreats and then she's like oh uh, it, I don't think it likes me very much <laughs> <laughs> returns the bow to you that seems to be a very dangerous experiment <laughs> I would say and uh the the last thing I will ask is, I'd like I would like to ask you. You mentioned that you were a child when you we were lost. I wonder if you know about the pale elves, because you see, it is the first time I have seen your kind. Um. I've only heard the rumors, Mm. but here you are. She tries to recount um, uh, her memories, and she expresses that she herself doesn't know much about uh, the Shatter Kai outside of uh, like what she's read in the library of uh, at the Mistral Peak. because like that's also that's that's also some something like a personal goal for her 
uh, is to learn more about her own people because but she does express that uh, she vaguely remembers being around other children and not <clears throat> not like being treated properly and uh, her one of her like earliest memories uh, prior to like arriving at the Mistral Peak was you know her being transported with a bunch of other kids uh, uh, through the deserts of um, uh, Exoria and then like her choosing to sneak out of that caravan and like run away and she cannot like she she traversed the desert for a while found the mistral peak and uh, decided to scale it firwal will look intently and give her uh, a look of amazement right mm. and he says that is fascinating do you know that your people come from the shadow fell and for you to be in this plane and survive all of that by yourself is amazing she she like nods her head and like tries to smile understanding that what you're saying is a compliment but because she's remembering uh these like painful memories um she can't help but like you know uh radiate that uh pain um galea is not a very uh not very discreet when it comes to her emotions it always shows on her face <laughs> how she's feeling and so firwal notices this and he will just say do not fret however we are all children of Corilon. And I am happy to have met the first pale elf, a shadow Kai. And I am glad that it is you. Much as I was very happy to see the first Eladrin that I have ever come upon, which is now our king. So I would like to take my leave and have a word with King Kalumbas. Thank you. All right. Cool. Um, the rest of you guys, Harubid, uh, Lumi, Astra, what are you guys doing? Uh, Lumi was like, oh, by the way, audio check, can you guys hear me? Yeah, can hear you. I have you at 200%. Oh, it's that low. Um, so when they were talking about the fire, I mean, the element of, of fire, Lumi is brought back to his memories of the fire that burned his um, circus family. But uh, feeling that it was so distant, he just lets out a smile of sorts. And then... Um, when he saw that Galea was starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable reminiscing about the past, he interjects and says, Oh, yeah, that's a really cool bow, right, Galea? But wait, uh, wait till you see this. And then he flashes like his, his like, um, like this shiny white robe that Lumi has been wearing mm -hmm. from the, you know, one of his hand and like, it's really cool, right? And she's like, she, he strikes a pose and and that's like, ooh, and like, it's like hot take the tour or something. And um, at the same time, um, while pala, they were talking to each other, uh, Lumi was casting a little bit of prestige meditation yeah. to the food. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was like, this is really good, Athena. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah. Uh, and all the while, or you're Astra, trying, yeah, Astra. Astra, Astra will also say, "Your Majesty, I have to commend you. I've, I really enjoy the very chewy texture and uh, the very, very subtle flavors." <laughs> chewy. She's Athena. Is like subtle. 
Well, I wasn't going for subtle. I I guess I should add more, and then she adds more, <laughs> more <laughs> flavors to like. Uh, <clears throat> It's very very strong flavors that she adds. Don't do it. She, Don't do it. Let me try to hide casting more prestigiations on the food, <laughs> like at the back of Astro. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, while you're trying to uh, cheer up Galea and impress her as well, Galea just looks uh, immediately very, very happy and surprised, and she she like claps really really quickly at you posing and like showing off. Um, the the cloak, and then she's like, "That's the that's a flying cloak, right? Yeah. Like it, like it transforms into like a like a like like wings or something. Can you do that? Um, yeah, yeah, I can do that, but uh, maybe after dinner. Um, I'm enjoying this food. This is really really good. You should really try some. Maybe it's pass more prestigiation. <laughs> 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 all right and then uh athena is like serving food and it serves food to like harubid and then it's like uh here you go uh this is this is for you haru uh how do you like it <laughs> all right um <laughs> Uh, this is post prestidigitation, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, I'm famished. Yeah. You know, so. Prestidigitation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, you know, um, and and uh, it, it's it's uh, like your presence. It's a it's a breath of fresh air, and I go, I go wrong. <laughs> consume oh. it all. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and then she she walks past you and then serves uh, a a bowl to King Kalumvas. It's not even a plate; it's a bowl. So you guys know. It's <laughs> all right. <clears throat> and then at this point, uh, King Kalumvas is saying, "Oh, thank you, thank you, dear." Now, uh, to our order of business. Uh, we have learned that, and as you have n- noticed, that the world is not quite as kind, and Mother Nature is is becoming more and more ferocious. And you guys are recounting uh, the past few weeks now. It's only gotten worse, but. In all over Tarin and Gamaril, uh, the weather has become uh, quite violent with, and very erratic with clear skies one moment and then a thunderstorm sto- the next. And then even though um, it's, it's not quite the time for it and Gamaril isn't like the play, uh, like within the G geological area for snow it snows and hail sometimes and then you've heard word from the shores that there have been huge tidal waves and the seas have become uh crazy and uh very very uh uh scary right so kalamvas expresses that and reminds you of of that and then he uh, says that because of this, I have extended my um, connections to the circle of druids within the uh, across the ancient tree, and they have uh, gotten back to me and uh, told me that they will be sending one of their uh, finer druids. Uh, to to help us with this problem uh, they express that it is not something that can be solved here within the material plane but something to do with the Feywild I entrust that should it come to this that we must travel to the Feywild 
you will help us solve this issue as King Calmvas looks at uh, the whole group. Uh, Fearwall will <clears throat> say, of course we are willing and of course we will serve, but the Feywild is a treacherous place. How are we supposed to know our way there when it is filled with danger and mischief from all sorts of creatures? I was told that the druids would be uh, granting us a guide. Sorry, granting you a guide. Uh, of course, the queen and I must stay here. We're we have to take care of things at Kailora. But you should be able to make it through <clears throat> the Feywilds without much problems if the Druids say that they will be um they will they will have a guide. That is reassuring because I fear what might happen if we go there by ourselves. Yep. And as if on cue, you guys hear uh, the footfalls of the royal guard outside, kind of like making their way uh, towards the front of the terrace over here and like pointing their bows uh, down and outside. And then you start hearing Torin barking, and uh, you hear a voice from outside, a uh, a voice with a very interesting accent, and you hear them as they shout, "Oi! Hey, uh, can anybody uh, get out of here?" And uh, we're so we're I'm Lanu <laughs> you guys see if any of you go out of the tea house and like look down in front of the in front of the wolf's den are two figures uh, one is a very very small turtle so what turtles are are uh, humanoid turtles very small about three foot in height but with the uh, with a red cap uh is that a party hat um more like uh lano says that it's a it's a it's a like a wizard's hat but oh. it's too it's too small for a wizard it doesn't even have the like the the hood i mean the the shaded part of it so yeah it's kind of like a party <laughs> a party it's a traffic cone. So Lano's like, "Hey, uh, we gotta. Uh, we're here. The Circle of Druids. They uh, uh told told me to come over here, and uh, uh, you guys some have some sort of like Feywild problem, and we guys have been feeling it uh here in the Material Plane. It's kind of it's. Can we come in? Oh, and this is my friend. This is Nix. And you guys see beside Lano, is a. Actually, Chloe, please describe your character. Um, beside Lanu is um uh, average height humanoid. Uh, you see her face is a uh, featureless, like it's a blank slate. But where you can imagine the eyes would be, there's like paint or eyeliner coat that shapes the eyes and then also color that shapes the lips where it would be it's like she drew her face on oh where there was no features and she has long pale pinkish hair and she's has a dark uh, cloak covering her yeah it's all right so those are the two figures outside the wolf's den requesting entrance. 
It just has a nice pattern. Bum bum. Uh, Astra will walk, uh, go down to make sure that they are able to uh, go through, and then she'll say, "Please come in. Um, forgive the ash. A, a friend of ours has a, a habit of uh, practicing his uh, fire magic. It's <laughs> ignore it." <laughs> Oh, uh, fire magic, you say, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, my, myself in particular, I'm a little bit of a pyromaniac myself. Look what I can do. And then he, Lanu, um, extends his, like, little turtle arm and casts the cantrip produce flame in his hand. Very, very unimpressive compared to what, uh, your Zadel or Farewell can do. Uh, Astra will um wait for a second as if she's waiting for like the fire to increase and she says impressive it's uh i'm i'm very impressed uh let's 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 go upstairs so that you may meet the others yeah yeah uh yeah uh, a lot of people are always impressed by that uh but uh you know i'm not i'm not you know always a show off uh so I'm not showing my full strength here. But yeah, ain't that right, Nyx? Yeah, L- Lan is very impressive. Yeah. Her, uh, her voice is very monotone. Nyx's voice. I like her. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the Circle of Druids said that I was meeting some sort of king and queen of... Like a... Uh, like the, the king and queen of... K K Rola or uh, who who who's I, that? I believe you will mean the uh, King Kalumvas and Athena of Kalora. Oh my God, where's my accent going tonight, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Lano goes over to to Lumi because Lumi at this point is like posing, you know, like very majestically. With uh, with a white coat and everything, oh, your Majesty! Uh, uh thank you so much for summoning us uh, here. My name is Lanu. I'll be um, uh, graciously serving you today. This is my uh, my uh, my comrade and friend, uh, Nick's over here. Uh, we'll be helping you with all your uh, problems today. But by the way, you look so amazing and graceful with uh, the white coat. It really suits you well. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for having us. <laughs> we just like this and says like, like yes, come, come, join my table. And then he <laughs> seat right next to the king, and then he's like, you may sit here. And then and then he's like gauging what the reaction of the royal of the royalties are, and he's like, I still like your hat. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you, thank you. It's uh uh my friend made it for me. I, actually, my fans made it for me. He's totally lying. <laughs> so he sits over here uh, beside uh, Queen Asina. They're not wearing crowns, you know. They're, I don't know. They're not that type of uh, king and queen. They're so, humble. Yeah. He sits down there beside Asina. He's like, uh, just like gives Athena, like, you know that bro nod? It's like, uh, Hey, how you doing? And then to <laughs> continue, continue like facing Lumi. So, uh, your Majesty, uh, what can we do yours do yours for, huh? Lumi nervously looks at. Um... Looks at. Hello. And seeing if they're reacting. Can you guys hear me? <coughs> yeah. yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, Lumisi is ner- nervously looking at the king and queen, seeing they're acting at all. They just look entertained. Um, 
they're not like insulted or anything. They're just happy that you know no one recognize like I like they're very used to like people recognizing them right away and being polite and whatever. But Lano uh, like expressing himself this way uh, is just something that's refreshing to them. So they're just you know enjoying the moment as well. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Uh, Nix, would you like to say anything? Because you move towards Lumi. I just look at the queen and then my face you know, turns into something different. Oh. The eyes became, become brighter and the, my hair becomes like a more bright pink. And then I say, hello, your majesty. And then, that's, and then I go back to my blank face state. Okay, so you you turn into Sai for a bit or no? Yeah, I just turn into Sai for a bit and then greet the king and queen. Okay. And then I turn back. So Sai looks like that. Pink hair, uh, pink bright eyes. Very, like... And then... Uh, after greeting the king and queen, she goes back to being uh, the pale duck. And then Athena will say, "Oh my, uh, changeling." And why well, yes? And you are uh, our, our druid, I presume. Uh, speaking, addressing Lano, and then Lano is like. Yeah, yeah, I'm the druid. Uh, I was uh, sent over here by uh, the, the 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 old man, old man, goat goat man, and uh, um. So here's the deal. So uh, uh, I personally, I can't uh, like accompany you to the Feywilds. I've never been there. I I don't know. I won't be able to guide you around. But Nix over here, I tell you, she's a. Uh, She's got some fey ancestry in her, so uh, <clears throat> she's she's bound to uh, know her way, right, Nix? Yes, I think so. Okay, so Nix, uh, you yourself would not be able to traverse the Feywild uh, by yourself, but because um, your patron Ezra is an archfey. Uh, you're confident that she will guide you as you uh, traverse through the Feywilds. Uh, okay. Uh, I need to ask you, Chloe, because I forgot. But does Sai has Sai or Nyx expressed to uh, the Pancake Club uh, and like uh, told them about Ezra? No, I don't think so. Okay, so maybe it's a downtime. Maybe they don't know. Up to you. Do you think Sai would have told them? But how them? they know that that they can go to the Oh, it's it's just because you're a you're a changeling, and uh, when okay. they when they asked you when they asked Nix and or Sai that if you can traverse the Feywilds without a problem, uh, uh, maybe you said yes, and they they just believe you. No, I won't. I won't tell anyone about this. Okay, noted. So Lanu continues going. So yeah, uh, Nix over here will be your guide. I'm gonna be in charge of opening the the portal, and uh, and like, um, we'll figure out a way for you guys to communicate with me when you're ready to come back, and I'll open a portal again. Yeah. I can send you a message, Lanu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you know my uh, my my podcast number, so uh, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of podcast, have you guys heard my podcast? You probably you probably have, right? Uh, Lano's podcast. So you should you should listen uh, to Lano's podcast. I, I turn to Lano and I said, "Do do you have a landline number?" No, no. Uh, it's a a uh, <laughs> not. A more, it's more kind of like a root, root line, root connection thing. So, uh, I have, I have this thing. It's a spudcast, but uh, you know, you, um, you probably heard of me. I get a few uh, thousands, uh, thousand 
listeners uh, every year. And <laughs> so go to your nearest tree. You can. Yeah, you can go go to the go to your nearest tree. Put your ear to mm. like the roots, and uh, you you can hear my podcast. Uh, it's pretty cool. I I I recount all of the Pancake Club's adventures there, and uh, uh, yeah. So you know, I'm pretty you know, I'm not 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 to brag or anything, but uh, it's a pretty pretty popular thing. Yeah. No, Lanu, you're pretty great. You're pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nix. Here, all will. Tell Lanu, perhaps I have heard the trees around my forest whisper about your stories. Oh yeah, they're my they're my biggest demographic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're my biggest demographic. My best friend actually is a uh, my best friend's a treant, and uh, so you know uh, trees. Me, I, I'm a you know. They're a sucker for these things, and uh, they're my number one demographic for sure. Gumi is like, I don't, I don't think I agree with that, but maybe you should ask Katiana when he looks at Katiana. <laughs> uh, you you introduce to Ka- her, him to Katiana, and Lano is like, oh hey there, sweet cheeks, and he's <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't even know if Tess Tess approves of this because I don't. So Lano is Tess's character, one of the mem- uh, one of the players of the Pancake Club. Uh, she couldn't be here today because her whole she's in. Uh, she lives in. I forget where she lives in now, but she lives in the states, and it's morning for her there. <laughs> So I, I just asked permission from her to use Lano. But anyway, Lano goes over to Katiana, very swag, like puts on his macho. But you know, he's a three three foot tall turtle. And he's like, hey there, sweet cheeks. How about you and I, uh, you know, uh, get to know each other. You interested in the podcast? Uh, I could have you on sometime and, uh, you know, have your few minutes of uh, fame on there get you a good deal <laughs> uh, but because Mel isn't here uh, I don't know how Katiana will react but anyway moving forward from Lanu uh, she like Rory? <laughs> what? isn't Katiana royalty? she doesn't act like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can Pirwal ask Kalambas, right? He says, Your Majesty, <laughs> is it is it safe to trust these people? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking for assurance. <laughs> Do you trust them? Uh, Kalambas will express to Pirwal and the rest of Wolf's Guard as well that uh, these people can be trusted as news have also has also uh like made their way to Kalora and they have learned that the pancake club uh is responsible for the re uh rebooting of the gauntlet of gathering as the gauntlet of gathering has since been a problematic event for Gamaril in the the past five years but now in its sixth year it's promised to uh, return to its original um, goals with that being the gauntlet of gathering as an event for like a cultural exchange between Gamaril and uh, Avalon specifically uh, Athendil Oh, so Firwal will uh, respond by saying, I see. So these are the people that my cousin Felor was talking about as he journeyed with them. I see. Now Now my apprehension has been addressed. I trust them as my cousin has trusted them. Wait. Your cousins with with fellow with with fellow Melorn. 
You hear yes, that, Nix? That is, oh, Nix, uh, this guy's the cousin of Felor Milor. Mm, no, uh, that's oh. why he's so familiar. I oh, jeez, it's a, it's a great thing to meet you. And he, Lano goes over, like, like skips past Katayana, for, completely forgetting about her. Shakes, shakes Firwa's hand, like, uh, very violently. I, it's very good to meet you. Um, 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 <clears throat> what's your name? Uh, it is Firwa. Firwa, your names, your, your names are kind of weird, right? Like, all of you's, well, you guys just have... Have all your names start with F? It is something that is a custom in our family. Ah, uh, I don't know about my family if like everybody in uh, in our group like starts with the letter L, but that'd be pretty cool. Or not? Actually, you know what? I prefer my name to be like Joe, the one and only. You know, like pretty unique. So your name's pretty cool because I don't think I've never met anybody else by the name of Fearwell. Or your your but your cousin buddy Felor Melor and he's got he's got a pretty funny name. Uh, one of our other friends uh made fun of his name when we met him <laughs> the first time. So that's pretty cool. Hey, ain't that cool, Nick? So we we met the Felor's cousin. You mean Felor? Felor's cousin. Oh, no. fellow's cousin. Oh, they're cousins. Both <laughs> each other's cousins. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that, that is true. That kind of that's kind of the the thing. So when a person is the cousin of another person, oh. that person okay. is the cousin of that oh. uh, person. You know. So I never knew. I didn't yeah, yeah. have so if, much family. Ah, uh, ah, uh, geez. Yeah, yeah. You told me about that. Uh, but we're not mm. gonna get into it. Uh, uh, this time we have more important matters to discuss. Mm. Like, okay. like my spudcast. So, have you heard about my spudcast? Oh, okay. So, uh, Haru joins in when one's hearing that. So, I hear, uh, and then they were talking about names. So, I said something like, Oh, your name does sound familiar. Is it uh, any relation to Lano Del Rey? <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. You get a clover leaf. Uh, and then, and then Lano is just like, Oh, Lando, that, that fucker, she's been stealing my, my fucking limelight, that poison. And, um, first of all, completely fake name, that Lando Del Rey. Complete poser. I, I bet you all my gold pieces. Uh, probably not. I probably would bet like just uh, two copper pieces. I bet you two copper pieces that that poison's... That person does not have that real name. They stole that name when they heard my podcast and I was oh, getting popular <laughs> and decided to steal my fucking identity. <laughs> Sorry for my my my, my <laughs> druidic. <clears throat> it's okay. But since the, you mentioned uh, you have a little following, uh, does this make you an uh, what they call uh, an influencer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it, exactly. Oh my, uh, god. Uh, oh my god! I'm not actually. I prefer the I prefer the time, um, uh, KOL, key opinion leader. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, the the oh. toy the time influencer is kind of like a uh, slang and like more accepted by the general population. But KOL or key opinion leader, uh, that's the more uh, professional. Um, uh, title that uh, we KOLs, you know, go by. So, uh, thank you very much for, uh, you know. Oh, it's nice to meet you. And I, I, I provide, I present my, uh, my quote-unquote business card. <laughs> okay, you, you yeah. present your business uh, card. Oh, nice, a business yeah, card. So you oh. may have heard of our chalices, <laughs> and and our line of souvenirs from the islands. <laughs> Hey, hey, you're the... Uh, and the franchise of uh, massage parlors called Helot. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, Nix, Nix, you heard about Helot, right? It's that uh, that thing we the Pancake Club always wanted to do, but we didn't get a chance to because all of us are busy and like we're all doing different things right now, and b b we never got the chance to, but hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we, we um, always want to... down to... Uh, you know, to partner with uh, key opinion leaders such as yourself. I, I think I know some of my uh, 
some people who work under me, I think they watch your uh, spudcast, and they told me it was a piece of crop. I'm joking. I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they said that, huh? They said it's a piece of crop? Crop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crop. <laughs> crop. Well, yeah, like, how how could you how could you listen to this yeah. podcast any other way? Anyway, so... Yeah, so Anyways, uh, me, I'm sorry, like, I completely know. forgot. Uh, it's a it's a proper, yeah. it's it's uh, colloquial to, to 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 exchange business cards when re- when receiving one. So uh, I take yours, very nice, uh, very fine paper. Uh, here's mine, and Lanu gives you a leaf. Right. Oh, I like this leaflet. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 just a leaf. I see. Yes. It doesn't have like like Lana's no. name on it. Nope, it's just <laughs> a leaf. <laughs> I take I take the leaf and then write down Lana's name and then paint like a little turtle. Hey, Lana. Oh, nice. You know what? I actually have the perfect product that I can uh, probably help. Uh, need, that I need that I need your help with with promotions. Oh, what cool! Do you think yeah. About Lana yards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lanu yards. I understand. It's mm-hmm. like the it's like lanyards, but mm-hmm. with mine. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's got my name. It's a play on words. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, and we can put your leaf, uh, you know, as a tag to remind people, uh, to promote your podcast. I like this, and in exchange, you want like a shout out from me on on my podcast, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would appreciate all forms of marketing. I mean, promotion. <laughs> this is, this is very. At least uh, uh, three minutes per hour. <laughs> hmm, I can, I think I can do this. But uh, I'll have to get back to you. I need to talk to my lawyers about this. You will get fifty-five percent of whatever revenue you get from the Lanu yards. Lanu whispers. It's customary for my. Uh, <clears throat> Lano, <laughs> Lano whispers to Nix. He's like revenue, like like nudges, nudges Nix's Nix's like thigh. It's like a a uh, Nix. Yeah. I'm actually quite excited. This is my first gig of like uh like you know being being like uh like promoting something. I I I don't know how these things go. Like, do you think fifty five percent is is a good rate? It's not not too low, not too high. I talk to Lano's mind. Like so that Harubid won't hear us. Um, I think he, Whoa! he might be scamming you, Lanu. I keep forgetting so about that. I'll take your time. Take your time. Uh, you know, you know where to call me. <laughs> so Harubid, you you look at Lanu, and Lanu is just like looking at Nix, and he's like, his face is like shifting a lot, as if having this conversation in his head. He's trying so hard to communicate with Nix through his mind. So Lanu's like, so uh, you think. You think it's not good enough, huh? The the fifty five percent. No, no, it's not good enough. So, I work with a bunch of guild people. I know how merchants work. I know I know their schemes. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like you know your whole art situation, your whole art business. Yeah. Uh, like I know okay. a scam when I see one. I okay, okay. So if not fifty five percent, it's gotta be fifty six percent, don't right? Yeah, that's better. Go yeah, okay, before. okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, fa- fast forward a little bit. Uh, as much as entertaining this is for Queen Athena and Queen Kalumbas, um, they do eventually stand up and say that they best be on their way and they entrust you, the Wolf's Guard, and the help of some of the members of the pancake club uh to get all of this sorted out as uh we don't know how dangerous uh, mother nature can be in uh the material plane uh so they bid you farewell uh if there's anything else you'd like to tell uh queen athena and king kalamvas now you may do so before they leave uh, Firwal will just say, <clears throat> uh, just to inform Kalumbas, says, 
Brother, I would like to share that I have recently spent some time with a high elf that knows your mother. And in sharing that time with him, I have come to realize that I have been recently very hard on your people. And I apologize for having those views. I realize now that we are all sons and daughters of Corillon. And I should reserve judgment and hold all elves with better regard. All right, that's a great farewell. You get a clover leaf, and Kalumvas, after hearing this, a smile forms on his face, <clears throat> and he gives you a uh, the like a, a gentle nod, and then he puts a hand on your shoulder and says, "I am proud of your development, farewell." And I look forward to your continued growth. And I must say, for the Wolf's Guard to be one of our, one of Kaylora's finest, you could not make us any prouder. As he looks to Queen Athena, and Queen Athena smiles and nods as well. Uh, as they radiate with pride uh, for uh, your group, the Wolf's Guard. Pirwal nods and says, much appreciated. But I would have to give credit to my comrades. They are good role models <laughs> for me. Uh, anything else? Uh, so Haru uh, okay. goes to Queen Athena. Mm -hmm. My queen and king. <laughs> yes, dear. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it it is unfortunate that it's um your visit is short, but it is also sweet. This is a pleasant uh, visit, and uh, words cannot express. <laughs> The gratitude I have. For... <laughs> what? No. I thought you were going to like do an expression also, of love. <laughs> no, the gratitude. No, because of my, uh, I've discovered my love for entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in uh, some other time, we could we could discuss further on uh, maybe creating uh, a th Athena a think tank. You know, something something that we can work together. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Astro will Astro will be standing but, beside Harabid when she uh, says for this. Another and she... story. That is for another time. I, I As... think that, yeah. As Astro will be watching Harubid and she'll be kind of like mouthing the words like What are you doing? <laughs> uh to <laughs> Haru. Um and then uh, she will look at uh, king and the king and queen and say, like, uh, Your Highness, you have our word as the Wolf's Guard that this will be a successful mission. I agree that there does seem to be some very strange happenings underway that do need our attention. Please, um, is there any other way that you could contact us while we are in the Feywild, just in case we may have some updates while we are there. Uh, <clears throat> Kalamva says that uh, it's, it's kind of up to Lanu and the other circle of druids. It seems that only they, at least fr like from the knowledge of Kalamvas and Queen Athena, that only they can communicate from across uh, those two planes, the material plane and the Feywilds. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, astronauts. Yeah. 
There you go. Uh, but they do say like, uh, outside of outside of uh, you're com- communicating through Lanu. Um, if there's any other form of magic that you are aware of that we are not, I please feel free to do so. We really need to buy like a sanding stone, guys. We need to buy sanding stones. <laughs> We're the wolf Sending guard. We need. Yeah, we need. Uh, we need constant communication. <laughs> uh, what do you say, Chloe? I can send. I just a pipe up and say I can send a message. Oh. Oh. What's up? That what? would be of great use to us. Uh, what? Can, you, can you do sending from Feywild to the material plane? I'm not sure. I, I feel like not, but it's okay. okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I think with the help of Ezra, it should be possible. Okay. But in delay, the eye. Delay the eye. Yeah, this is latency. <laughs> Two to three business days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> And with that, uh, any anyone else before we proceed? If not, Queen Athena and King Kalimbas, uh bid the Wolf's Guard farewell. Uh, this does not happen often, as they, you know, are busy running a kingdom. Uh, so, to take some time out of their busy busy schedules to come meet you. Um, Arguably their favorite, like, <laughs> like group of knights of Kaylora. Uh, they they themselves had a good time, so they leave, and you guys make your way. Uh, you guys make your way to the ancient tree. <clears throat> so let me go there. So as the pancake club know and probably some of you. The ancient tree is uh, the largest tree uh, in all of, in the whole of Tarin. Do I have that map prepared? It should be an old, hang on. Maps, Gamaril, ancient tree. Continue. Okay, it's gonna be very quick here, uh, but we'll try to load it if it will load for you guys. Yeah, Firo finally gets to see it in person. <laughs> Kokalyong shipping lines <laughs> incorporated. Chester enter. Okay, so new map. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for you guys. But let me know when you're loaded. It's 75% there. Cool, yo. Cool. Take a screenshot just in case it's slow for like yeah. other people. Uh, Sai, Lano, uh, Ezra, and Galea, 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 Galea. It's it's just a very big tree here. I'll take a screenshot. It's giant. <laughs> very, very big tree. I'm still zooming in. <laughs> <coughs> oh my so, god, it's so big. <laughs> it's enough trees, yeah. That's it's an average amount. So the ancient tree is this large tree and then it has like smaller trees that surround it imagine uh what's that what's that tree Oy, i keep forgetting a filipino jungle tree thing with like multiple trees balete balete <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah balete exactly so it's like it's like a huge balete tree and with different branches i know different trunks that uh, emerge from the ground and upwards into a singular canopy at it 
Uh, just like that. And then... Um, we all will just like to go near and... Uh, he, he sheds a tear, seeing this for the first time. He kneels. He plants a golden gilded acorn, right? And he just says, Praise thee, Ridifin Ralathil, the great oak, master of the rivers, the trees, the deserts and hills, the true carer of elves and the hunter of beasts. And then he stands and he moves back. Great. You do that, Lano is like nudging Nyx again. And then <clears throat> he's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that uh, like all elves were religious. Like Felor Miller was kind of like this, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, like they, they, they pray a lot. <laughs> and then Lano just goes. <laughs> Uh, okay so uh all right guys you you fo- follow our lead uh be careful so you guys will you know have to park um wolf's den like you know somewhere to put there you guys don't see ezra by the way so you do not see ezra that's there so lano leads you through the baleta like like the different trunks and uh, the the trees that emerge from the ground until you meet at like the central trunk which is the largest and uh, the the main branch of this this ancient tree a main trunk of this ancient tree so let me get let me move you guys there uh boom All right, and <clears throat> so Lanu takes his staff. He's got this staff. Staff is way taller than him. It's probably like four or five five feet tall. It's got a little uh, a crook at the top. I wonder if I can hang on. I might have a photo, full photo PCs. Uh, no, Gauntlet of Gathering, Art. Yeah, 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 Lano looks like this. Uh, the staff isn't way taller, but it's like a foot taller than him. And then... This is Nix's, Nix's art. Alright. And then Lano... Uh, Touches the the main trunk with uh is it a is it a hand or a claw or a, I'm gonna say a hand. Lano touches the trunk with his hand and with the staff. He puts it uh, like the side, and then he starts um uh, muttering an incantation under his breath. And then he's like, Open the sesame! And then nothing happens. <laughs> and he's like, Wait, uh, actually, wait, no. Hey, Nix, can you, like, uh, like reach into my, 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 my bag? Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a pile of papers over there that I write my incantations down. Okay, and I use my chance to get the papers and then hand it over to Lan. Cool. No, not that one. That's my that's my uh, okay. my, my shopping uh, list. And I just rummage through the bag with like my mage hand not touching the bag. And they just this one, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> Eventually you guys uh, you guys find it and it's like ha this yes, this one. It it's this one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Bippity boppity. P- Wait, no, that's not that's not it either. Abracad. No, that's not it. Yeah, ha- hang on, guys. Hang on. I- I'll get this. 
<laughs> he takes some time, and then eventually he does find the right incantation, and then you guys see uh, something magnificent. As much as Lano has made it easy for you to underestimate him, uh, the next scene is nothing short of glorious. His staff glows a bright green and yellow and a beam of bright light extends upwards into the canopy of this large tree and all the leaves from their green color they all turn into pink and purple it's a flash of light and then the wood from the branches and the trunks become pale white as then for a brief moment uh, you all feel feel a connection to another world uh, a bright light forming a crack on the on the tree will form uh, it's not so much a crack as as it is a just a tracing of the the bark on the wood <clears throat> until the bark itself will move and warp and distort to form an opening and the opening is just a bright light uh, and Lanu is there in all his glory standing in front of this opening uh, short short creature three three foot tall then and then is now just shouting at all of you all right all of you go inside i can't hold this for so long i say 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 hi to everybody uh, you you guys tell me what 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 what, what you guys find and then go 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 <laughs> just telling you guys to go bye, bye. Yeah, bye, Nix. I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you again in a, a, a couple of days or or however long. Okay. Uh, enjoy your time. Uh, and you guys enter. Let me enter yes. class. He was trying to listen to from the trees. Listen what? Yeah, this podcast. On <laughs> this podcast. He was trying to look for you. Yeah. Uh, no, no luck. It seems unbelievable to you that like Lano has this podcast. <laughs> like, maybe you feel stupid for like leaning your head against a tree and trying to listen for audio. <laughs> All right. You guys enter and find yourselves in the Feywild. And with that, let's take a break. Mm. Alright, let's take a break because I need to eat also. See you guys back here in like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Feywild. Yeah. Feywild. <laughs> Fey <Wild time. laughs> what? <laughs> I know Just Lumi is going to touch yeah. something that yeah, he's not supposed to. <laughs> Be careful, things might explode. <laughs> and when they explode, they might release gaseous, not poison, but fart. <laughs> All right. How does it feel to see Athena, Haru? <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm over it. <laughs> you have your new love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still developing it. Actually, the story a little bit. Yeah, we the 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 party has never seen this person, right? Yeah. For, okay, I kind of talked to her about it a little <laughs> bit. Still developing the character. Um. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. All I know is she's a she's a dancer. <laughs> so she'll get along with Gatti. Mm-mm. She's an elven dancer, but she's actually an assassin. Yeah. <sighs> Sounds an familiar. Elf an elf and a half orc. Uh, However, did you make it work? Okay, it's complicated. <laughs> it, well, unless you, unless you worship Groom, she's going to be very mad at you. But you're not. Your your Haru doesn't. No. Follow the no, old she's more, ways, she's right? more human, yeah, no. more, more, more human. Uh, human. Yeah. Mm-mm. How you grew up with your mom, so there. Mm-mm-mm. Actually, yeah, no, she, she, we're, she's working on a backstory. <laughs> Mm-mm. What if long sword was actually from your father? No, no. <laughs> 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 Never. That was for my mom. Okay, wait. I will rest for a little bit. Yep. No one but Lee heard me. Oh my god, no one heard me. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me we now? can hear you, but it's Koan. A little bit kind of soft. All right, you guys find yourselves in the Feywild. I'll say that it's been a couple of days already. So, no. yeah, a couple of days already. You've had to, like, camp every now and then. And you have traversed uh, well and deep into the Feywild uh, following the lead of Nyx. And I'm sure you guys have noticed, especially those with high insight, that... When Nyx leads, she doesn't, it doesn't seem like she's the one leading. Uh, it's like she walks, right? And then when there's a, <clears throat> when there's a Any uh, point? fork, yeah, a fork on the path, she waits there. And then it's as if uh, she's having a conversation in her mind. <laughs> and then... Uh, after having this conversation uh, in her mind, and it's it it seems like it's not just in her mind because she can see a figure that you guys seemingly can't. So every now and then she look to like a general direction, and have this like telepathic communication to that like general space, and then she nods and like as if like to agree, and then she continues walking down the down like the path, right? So. Uh, do that what you will with that information but you do you guys do find a river uh, in the Feywild and there's a stone bridge that crosses it uh, it seems uh, artificial bridge created right and the scenery has been the same for the past few days very large trees uh that and then like a like that creates this canopy above you so the sh- shaded areas are you know uh under the the leaves of the trees um the vegetation and the plants kind of have the purplish pinkish tones although there are still green vegetation here but a lot adapt to like out of this world colors 
And the ground and the soil seems to sparkle and shimmer. Uh, and yeah. Um, good thing we did not touch anything that exploded. I think... Uh, I think that you guys might have touched a few things that exploded, but very harmless sensory effects only. <laughs> like... Um, like, you know, just immense swelling that make you look very comical. Like, your whole hand becomes, like, balloons up into, like, something that's very large. And then uh, flowers that uh, explode fart gas and whatever. And then, uh, you know, very kind of harmless things. Not anything that's, like, super dangerous. Uh, and you guys have noticed that ever since you've walked into the Feywild, whenever you go near uh, what seems to be like what seem to be other life forms in the Feywild, like creatures that move behind the tree line, they really run away from you. So uh, you guys uh, are scarier to most of these creatures. Uh, than they are to you, it seems. But there you go. So you guys find yourselves here uh, at the at one side of a bridge about to cross as Nyx is leading you across it. And uh, so yeah, so Ezra leads the way, leading Nyx. Nyx says, it, says it's fine. And then... Uh, if you guys make your way here over the bridge and you look down, Nyx, you look down here and you see very large fish. It's very clear water. <clears throat> very, very large fish, like uh, probably the size of, probably even bigger, bigger than like, uh, probably like the size of like, like orcas and like killer whales, but they're fish, they're not whales. Uh, imagine like different koi fish and other f other kinds of uh, fish that that can stay uh, by the uh, in the river, and then you see that you see these uh, floating things that kind of like uh, play under the shade of the the canopy above, and they stay over the water, and they kind of like skip over the water. They look like they look like very very small uh, will willow wisps that jump uh, from. And speaking of willow wisps, uh, Nix, would you like to summon Will? Oh, I summon the Willimothe Ukuan chime. no, like uh, from the pocket dimension. Okay, okay. Sure. Poof. Will appears. Poof. Will appears if I can find the token. I have so many tokens. It's ridiculous. Hang on. I think I need to upload it again. Ridiculous. Hang on. So you guys see Nyx as she's on the bridge. Summon a pixie, right? She's a pixie? Yeah. Cool, yo, cool, yo. Gauntlet of Gathering, Familiars and Companions, Will. Will is 0 0.5 size. Alright. Summoning Will there. Alright. And Will Summon uh, uh, appears from her pocket dimension. And she seems eager to join the other, like, floating, shiny things over the water. Oh, Lumi's over there. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then Lumi, you get close to the water, and then you see very, very, uh, these, f these sparkly things. They're very, very tiny people with, like, butterfly wings. So, they're pixies. And then... Oh. Uh, as one, like, notices you, 
the rest like kind of r- like fly away and like get scared but then one sees you and like gets curious goes near you a bit but as they like are about to reach the the bank of the river a fish will jump out of the water and eat the pixie oh my gosh in front of your oh eyes oh no and uh Nix's pixie will uh, sees this, gets scared, and hides inside of Nix's uh, coat. Lumi is full of minor sensory defects. Uh, you're muted, Lumi, okay? Oh, no, we can't hear you. Uh, he's having problems with his mic. Oh, no. But in any case, that's what happens. Uh, and Ezra just continues forward. Um, are there uh, any like um, fruits or vegetables or anything that yeah. um, Astra could uh, possibly gather for to study as possible alchemy uh, components? Sure. sure. The the ones that are easy to reach are mushrooms that you can find on the ground or growing on the sides of like trees. Uh, okay. But you look up at the these trees. Some of them are actually a lot of them are like very very tall and they have fruits uh, up there. But let's like about like I don't know um, maybe sixty to eighty feet up in the air. But the ones that are easily that you can reach easily are like mushrooms. Uh, Astro will gather like a handful of mushrooms and like sniff them and uh, just kind of study them to see if they're, you know, they could possibly be poisonous. Okay. Um, and please, then... please make me a nature or survival check. Sure. Um... This is better for me. 12? Okay. <clears throat> you get a handful of mushrooms, you sniff them, and you think they're okay. Uh, Astra looks a little like she's like, okay. And then she kind of puts them in her um, backpack just for further study later on. Got it. All right. Uh. uh. What check do I need to make if I want to see if we're tracking something? Uh, survival. Probably, yeah, survival, probably. But you can also do nature if you want. One of those. Are there any of those those fairy people nearby us? 17 is pretty good. Um, these ones are driven away by Lumi and the fish in the water these ones are playing under the shade of this tree but over the river but they're not near how uh yeah they're not near these ones okay um astro will say to farewell and harabid because lumi is too busy frolicking <laughs> in the field over there Perhaps we could possibly talk to those pixies. They might be able to tell us if there is any any strange activity that's happened in the Feywild. That might be a good idea. You want to talk to the pixies? Yes, though I fear that perhaps my appearance may seem quite intimidating for them. Lumi... You are the most charming of all of us. Perhaps you could try to <clears throat> talk to them. They seem to like you very much. I don't think it's really like I think it's those flying things that they like. But let's say I pull something out. What exactly do you want me to ask the bishops? You, uh, well, not the, the the pixies. If you could possibly ask the pixies, has there been any strange activity recently? I'll, I'll do my best. Um, Lumi tries to uh, use the hat of disguise mm-hmm. 
and change into a pixie. But since the hat of disguise maintains your size, I'm like a giant pixie. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sparkly. <laughs> I'm like sparkly, and I'm like, I don't know if I thought pixie or what, but <laughs> Wait, what are my languages even? Okay, so you. Lumi transforms into a medium-sized pixie. And... Alright. Uh, you try to s- communicate with them. Um, the pixie... What? I only know common dwarvish and elvish. Okay, good. Good to know. Um... The pixies, some of them get curious and they see you. And they actually, the ones that get curious actually like widen their eyes and think that you're like an archfey. And they immediately flock towards you over here. And then they speak to you in a language you do not understand. But, you know, they all have like very small voices, so they sound a little like. Would I be able to hear? <clears throat> um, yeah, you could hear. Um, do you speak Sylvan? Yes. <laughs> Colio, Holio. They speak well, Sylvan? Just, like, I just I mean, I don't speak. You don't? Lumi doesn't. <laughs> She's but... pretending to understand, like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're I, I, I try to say a foreign language, but it's um dwarvish. Dwarvish. <laughs> Lumi attempts to like communicate in dwarvish. <laughs> you speak in dwarvish, and then the pixies get confused. And fear while what you heard earlier was like, oh, are you an archfey? Are you an archfey? Are you, you you're, are you like a like a like a prince or a king around here? We've never seen you before. Is it, that's what you hear? And then Lumi starts speaking dwarvish. And then suddenly they're like, "What kind of what kind of fucking language is that?" <laughs> they just speak. Tiruwal tells Lumi they think you are royalty. I think you should try to impress them more. Uh, Astra will step up behind Lumi and then kind of like cough as if she's like clearing her throat, but she's actually casting tongues on him. Oh, okay. What is that? Uh, this spell grants the creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language it hears. Awesome. Can they and oh. they can speak the same? La- Moreover, la- when the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understand what it says. So that's yeah. cool. All right, cool. So, Lumi, you hear uh, the pixies. What kind of language is that? Like, you're... Hmm, you're kind of sus. <laughs> and, um... Lumi is like, uh, after hearing what... Fearwell mentioned, like, he thinks I'm Dory Thalatin, and he's Lumi's like, I have been called the king earlier this day. <laughs> By a <your> third <laughs> So... And then uh, Lumi, uh, like, this is like billowing. I, I should really get one of those billowing white capes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like, flashes his, like, like, um, like his, his uh, majestic cape of, of white wings thing. Right, right. And then he said, and he says, my friends, I forgive me for my French earlier. <laughs> um, I am here with uh this group and that lady over there and he points to nix yeah and then uh, we are wondering if we could ask for some help uh um would has anything has anything strange been happening in these lands please make a persuasion check no lumi uh Exclamation C. Oh, that's perception. Persuasion. Oh! <laughs> Guidance! 
Oh, it's a plus ten. God damn it! It's a plus ten. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you say that, and then they're like, "Hey, we don't know any turtles making people kings and such. You're an intruder. You are. You're an intruder." <laughs> So shouting at you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And then I, I um, for the flick of my wrist, that hat of the guy turns once more into a crown. <laughs> <laughs> a what? Small crown. A crown. Into a crown. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> oh, I see. I have a crown. Please that make. <laughs> Okay, please make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Uh, Astro's gonna cast guidance on him. Okay. She's just gonna be like, "Your Majesty," <laughs> and then like try to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So you. You put the crown on your head, and then the pixies are like, "Wait, hold on, hold on." He's got a point. He has a crown. <laughs> he has a crown. And uh, that checks out. And 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 it's on, on top of that. It's a it's a it's a small crown. So you know, he's probably like a like a like a like a archfey king of desserts or something. And then the, the pixies are like all in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be treated uh, kindly, Mr. Owens, again. Now, back to the topic at hand. And he's like, he has an air of like trying to be majestic and everything. Even if, I don't know if there are pixies in the desert. Um, so, has anything been troubling these lands lately? So they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, we got some troubles. And then there's this one pixie in the back. The, this pixie in the back has like a chain of flowers around its neck. And he's got like a like a like a flower cap, but w like with a bill, but then it's worn backwards, right? And then its its garments are kind of like very loose and then its garments that are on the like supposed to cover his lower body is like way low like way like by the thighs probably and then he's like hey yo so yeah we got some problems over here in this hood of ours and uh the Feywild is so urban <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like so uh, what's been happening is uh oh, I don't know I don't I lost the accent. Hang on. <laughs> I lost the accent. Hey. Hey, so uh Holmes, you you asking about some trouble, huh? What the fuck? No, now I'm New York. So fucking that's so... Anyway, so he speaks hood to you in a hood accent and then he's like yeah, I got some problems. Uh, so I had this broad on the side, and uh, I got her knocked up. And now I I got a, I got a kid, right? But then this broad, uh, she says I'm not the father. So uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> he just he just tells his, his life story of how he doesn't he do, he doesn't have custody of the kid that he just wants to see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you are not the father. Yeah, to the life story. Yeah. Um, he also shows this to Astro. And that seems to be the main problem of this land, having this. <laughs> <laughs> the justice system, and then, and they're like, fuck the system. You know what I mean? So he's good. Yeah. So, 
You know, Lumi, I understand that you seem very invested in this pixie story, but I really don't think that uh, the paternity of this pixie's child could possibly be the reason why our plane of existence is currently under threat. <laughs> um, um, Lumi, uh, like, Lumi indulges the pixies with their fatherly story and then he asks once more yeah yeah that that is very very uh that's very unfortunate maybe we can also do something about that if you tell me how we can help you uh maybe you could also help us by uh, we see uh, a plane of existence is under threat with this plane and um, we were wondering if you would have anything that you would know anything about or you could also point us to a direction Point you to what direction? Yeah, yeah. To you know, who, who would who would we think would know uh, about the, the things around here? You know, like the boss. Why oh, <laughs> oh, you want to talk? You want to talk to the boss? That that's the pixie accent. <laughs> <laughs> it catches. <laughs> Oh, you want to talk to the boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like the pixies oh, yeah. are like nodding at each other. Ah, uh, well, you see, uh, there are lots of bosses here in the Feywilds. Um, you got the ones over at, and then they kind of like narrate and like enumerate the different uh, uh, fairy courts, fey courts within the Feywild. And then you learn that the like organizational like situation here in the Feywilds, they're all div divided into different courts or different houses or different families. Um, <clears throat> kind of like describing um, just different groups, basically. And uh, I don't know if Nyx is paying attention to this conversation as well. Are you, Nyx? I, I can understand the conversation. Cool. Uh, you... You learn about this for, I don't know. Do you think Ezra would have told you about this before or not? Is Ezra secretive? I think he might have, maybe. Okay. So you learn about, oh, well, you hear again about the, the different Fey houses and different Fey families and um, you notice Ezra kind of like acting a little bit um, uncomfortable with this conversation, right? Uh, uh, but I have a feeling that Ezra wouldn't tell you why she's uncomfortable about it. And then when she talked to you about the Fae, different Fae families before, she wanted to end the conversation pretty quickly. She just told you that, yeah, there are Fae families uh mm. and and that's it so okay. she seems to have some form some sort of like discomfort when it comes to talking about fey families and whatever but mm. all right um so after the pixies narrate the different fey families um uh one of the other pixies um <clears throat> like uh, pipes up and then kind of like scolds the other pixies and like nah. hey your your conversation's kind of getting nowhere um you guys are you guys are saying that uh, uh you, I'm sorry your majesty you you're you're asking if there are problems within the Feywilds yes Yes, yes. Well, are there any problems in the thing? Well, yeah, so something that's new that's been happening around is uh, the, the, the Guardian Sentinels have been uh, awake again. And they've been asleep for a very long time. So when they're awake, that's usually an indicator that... Um, there's there's problems happening here that there's like something so bad that the Feywild has to f have to, has to like fight 
fight the bad away, you know? I see. So these Guardian Sentinels, something is stirring them up and no one knows. Um, that's right, yeah, something st uh, If by stirring them up you mean waking them up and not the... Uh, not like actually spinning them around. Yes, uh, there's something stirring them up. Of course. I knew that. They take the zero because I don't know much about the fake world. Yeah, because like, then, um, I, I was just making it clear because uh, it's quite possible to physically steer things up. Like, like us pixies, we're kind of small. So if you put us in like a bowl and then you take like a spoon and then you physically turn yeah. us around, <laughs> you're... <laughs> that's very charming but no it's not charming else... at all it's it's a bad <laughs> it's a bad experience uh that's how i broke my wing and then he shows you one of his wing it's kind of crooked but why why would someone put you in a bowl and steer you up? i mean i mean it's it's the feywilds it's uh, anything can happen here it's a stupid fucked up place so you you but you know that you're you're the king of you're the king of uh, desserts. Yeah, of course. I knew that. <laughs> and I sent like a telepathic message to Feral uh, by a message. It's like uh, I I don't know. I think I'm going nowhere with my questions here, Feral. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Feral. Can can I reply telepathically since you're talking to me? <laughs> I mean, how does message work? Is it like reply to a message when someone sends yeah. it to One response. Uh, okay. yeah. So I'll just say, we just need to know where we should be going. <clears throat> and uh, with that, Nyx, Ezra <clears throat> breaks from her, her like uh, very short trance as she reminisces the Fae families. And she, mm -hmm. you see her stopped at uh, this bridge, and then she points out to you that uh, there are two creatures across these ones. You see them. Yeah. And then Ezra. Oh, so pretty. Uh, Ezra says, <clears throat> "We seem to have found ourselves in the territory of some pseudo dragons, some fae, fairy dragons. I mean." <clears throat> she meant she meant fairy dragon. Sorry, that was my mistake. Mm. Um, best to be careful. These creatures are quite mischievous. Mischievous. <clears throat> I tell the party that there's two fairy dragons across the bridge, and then they're mischievous. So be careful. All right, Ezra. After hearing that whole call conversation with the pixies as well she kind of like has this worried look on her face and then she continues talking to Nyx if it is true that the guardians have awoken we could be in quite the predicament it would be hard to convince them to return to their slumber you see you you know of why they could be awake or what's happening here in the Feywild? I suspect that it's not just us who have entered the Feywild and caught and <clears throat> uh, she says I suspect that it's not just us who have entered into the Feywild there mm -hmm. must have been uh Others who came here before us and have caused the disruptan disruption. <clears throat> Which way should we go? Should she we points. Go... She points north. Okay. What, what do we? What should we do about the fairy dragons? Will they hurt us, or should we talk mm. with them? No, they are. They're mostly harmless. However, if you rile them up. Um, they could cause some, uh, interesting scenarios. 
food. Yep. So I tell the car teams we go north and then yeah, I just relay the info that there might be others who came here before us that caused the disruption. Cool. So we should go head north and then be careful of the fairy dragons or else some there they won't harm us unless we do something to them and Okay. Let's go north. So, so we're going north? Yep. Yeah. Alright. Before that, I will be really going to invite like, the uh, activity to it uh, and cross the river. And before that, like, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Pierwal says, say goodbye to your friends. <laughs> yeah. So I'm flying over. Uh, say goodbye to your little friends. Cool, you fly over. <clears throat> One pixie is like, Alrighty, bye king, good luck, good luck, take care. And then one the one is like, Hey, peace out, brother. And then the one the one is like, farewell, young one. Alright. Will will also waves at the pixies. They wave back. They also wave back. Um uh, Nyx, you notice as Will waves to the pixies and the pixies wave back at you. That's when they notice Ezra. And then they wave at Will, right? But when they notice yeah. Ezra, they start, they suddenly look scared and they fly away and they hide into like the bushes and leaves of the, the nearby plants. They're scared of Ezra. Um. It's understandable. And just the same as Ezra walks past these fairy dragons, they, you know, if uh, these dragons have like uh, these little winged things on like at the side of their head, imagine them like dog ears. They kind of like fold downwards when they're scared and then they kind of mm -hmm. like let her pass. And then you guys go through. But as soon as Ezra passes, the fairy dragons kind of like, they're very curious creatures. They go to Will, and then this one kind of like interacts with Will a little bit. Uh, what what does Will, how does Will react to this? I think she likes to play with them. She would like to play with them. Cool. She's so... very friendly. Uh, Will and, the, and this fairy dragon are playing. This fairy dragon is like going around. And then, and he's like chasing her around and whatever. Uh, this one over here, like kind of like, uh, sits atop this this plant over here, and kind of just note, just like, is immensely uh, intrigued by Torin and his size. It's like very is curious. Torin. Torin is the wolf, the dire wolf of Firwal. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Firwal will just tell Loki that uh, they may look like your friends, but do not get us into trouble. <laughs> All right. I I tell Will to tell the fairy dragon that we're just here to pass by and that we're friendly. Okay, uh, Will uh, does so to communicate with a fairy dragon. <clears throat> uh, everyone, please make um, three saving throws for me. All your mental ability scores. Intelligence, oh. intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Oh my god. I sucks at those deaths. All three? All three, please. Oh my god. One for each? Yes. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I suck that roll. Oh, finally, at least that's so bad. Oh, 
just <laughs> one. Oh no. Okay, so um, Astra, like when this is all happening, she uh, she is currently wearing this um, silver amulet that has um, blue and purple gemstones um, in, uh, embedded into it. And then when something she feels happens, the the amulet begins to glow um, because the amulet of the devout allows uh, gives her um, plus three to saving throw of my DC of my spell. Nope, that's when I cast a spell, not for my saving throws. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm so confident. I was like, I got this. Anyway, I failed my wisdom. Okay. You know, my main wad modifier. So <laughs> that happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm main lagi. Oh, okay. Lagi. 18, 9, and 16. Okay. Let me review. I'm uh, sorry, 24, 9, and 16. 24, 9, 16. Fear walls. Seven. 18, 18, and 13. 13. Okay, looming. 18, 11, 21. Okay, Haru bid. <clears throat> Haru, roll your save. Is Debbie back? It's okay, uh, I can roll for her. I'll roll for her. Go. Oh. And. Wiz. 21, not 20. Oof. Yikes. Oh no. The curse right. was guys, safe for good, yeah. Can you yeah. guys um, please type your saves in the chat and write them this way, for example, like that? Into so this. Sure. Oh, yeah. In start any order? Is... In, in any order, then? Int with charisma. Got it. Okay. Int with charisma. Thank you. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum. Man, our whiz saves are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of all the place, of all the places. <laughs> okay, hang on. Okay. You guys feel um it's like a very very quick very very short and quick migraine for a brief moment, right? And then it just goes away immediately. Uh you sh shake your head and you trudge forward. And hang on, I need, I need to write notes. <laughs> I need my notes. Oh. Uh, <coughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Whoo! All right. So you guys uh, move on forward, but Lumi, Astra, and Haru, you guys start seeing things in a more distorted manner. And Lumi, you're over here by the bushes. And 
it's as if the bushes are like wanting to interact with you so you feel you see the leaves like kind of reach out to you and grab your hand and your arm and like uh, another leaf like 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 brushes against your face uh that's that's what you're experiencing over there <clears throat> I mean, it's like I mean, it's um, seen from a non-hallucinogenic point of view, like holding a piece of fern to his face. W w sorry, what are we feeling? Um, it's like you're, it's like you're high. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The three, the three of you guys. Um, Astra you just feel like super light you know like like you could probably start to float and then you look down it feels like you're because you feel like you're light you feel like you're flying so you look down and your feet aren't touching the ground you're actually like actually you it seems like you're actually flying uh, okay uh astra will kind of walk forward towards uh Firwell. she's like Firwell. <laughs> Firwell, look at this and she's starting to like giggle which is very strange for astra yeah so like Firwell, look at my feet i'm not touching the floor Firwell. <laughs> Firwell is like, you seem oddly happy <laughs> Who cannot be happy if you are a pretty princess fairy dragon, Firwal? I'm flying! Oh my god. Oh my god, what is happening? And then you say that, Astra, and then suddenly your armor turns into like a dress, like oh covered god. in like glitter and everything. You sprout butterfly wings and. Like, like everyone can see it? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, not you. <laughs> I know not everyone. Oh, just me. <clears throat> just you. Uh, but Harubid, Harubid, like, you know, sees you. And then um, as you say that you're flying and you're a pretty dragon fairy princess, Harubid sees it too. Like, I, like she just manifests it in her mind as well that, yeah, what you're saying is true. And sees you fly and then she's just like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and uh, I, I'll go, go, go. Like, um, I see like uh, with the flowers in Alice in Wonderland, like <laughs> come into life, and then a fairy dragon princess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Astra <laughs> is gonna turn around. She's like, I've always thought that I would want to be a cleric for Mistra, but I realize now I want to be a fairy princess. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lumi is just on the like um on the leaves and he's now lying on the leaves like rolling around like guys this feels so good you should try it. it's, yeah. it's just so weird <laughs> for for Fearwell and Nyx Lumi is literally just like rolling on the ground on the bush <laughs> but to you Lumi like the the plants seem like they make like a hammock for you and they like cradle you and like rock you back and forth you're very comfortable here and then one of the 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 leaves kind of like carries over a uh a coconut cut in half with like a bamboo straw <laughs> let me start talking to the leaves like why well, yes pleasure to make your acquaintance and shakes his hand which is actually leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go um at this point ezra uh, tells Nyx that we we have to move forward. Uh, let's not dilly dally and be distracted by uh, these hallucinations. Okay. <clears throat> Pierwal will tell Nyx, uh, yeah. please lead the way. Okay, let's go, everyone. And I just uh, tell te te telekinetically shove the high people forward. <laughs> go move forward move forward let's do go. you see i am flying yes yes you are a fairy princess so pretty so pretty <laughs> so pretty okay, go, go, so go. pretty yes yes you yes, know they yes, say yes. dragon balls on pretty we're pretty oh, yes yes so pretty <laughs> i am pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> all right ashan you get a cloverleaf 
Yay! <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Okay. You guys make it to there. And uh, this, the fairy dragons are still following you around. They're very intrigued. Um, and then when you guys make it up to there, they kind of like uh, shout and like are like meep, 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 meep. And you see more of them pop up. You see uh, these ones start to appear. One over there, one over there, one there, another there, one by this tree, another there. <clears throat> okay, a lot of them show up, see them, and then, you know, um, they make their, they make way for Ezra, they're afraid of Ezra. But yeah, they start to surround the party now. And one goes up to Fearwell and kind of like uh, sits on top of like one of Fearwell's an antlers. Yeah. And just hangs there and like looks down at you. Meep. Meep. I will act as if I am not bothered by it. <laughs> Uh, it jumps to the other antler. <laughs> Meep. <laughs> okay. I will allow it to be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this this one is gonna go uh, on top of Harubid's head. He's gonna use Haru's hair as like a nest, and, like start. You know, like a cat when the cat is like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like pushing up and down with his front paws to, you know. So it's doing that on top of your head. What do you do? Biscuits. Mm, doing biscuits. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's a sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. All right. Uh, and then it stretches. <laughs> yeah, and lays, and lays on your hair. Uh, belly belly upwards <clears throat> this one goes over to Astra and stands on Astra's head as well and like flicks the the earring you have like cause it's shiny just plays with it is Astra still high? Astra's still high uh, <laughs> Astra, Astra kind of slowly puts her hands above and she gently touches it and she has like this big eyed happy expression, like her her mouth, her jaw is like open. And then she says, Farewell. Farewell. I have a crown. That is a dragon. <laughs> a dragon crown. <laughs> is she a dragon princess? And she look, she looks at Nyx, and she's like, like so happy. She's like tearing up. Dragon princess. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, with that, oh, oh, this one plays with Lumi as well. Um, Lumi, you see this one like stare in front of you, and then he. He has like one of his hands, he kind of like scratches his head and then his head tilts. And then he tilts on the other side. Uh, I match his um, You what? I match his movement. You touch? No, no, no. I, I also tilt my head the same way. Oh, okay. You tilt your head the same way, and then as it tilts its head the other way, its nose like poofs up and look and starts looking like your nose. And then it tilts its head again and then it starts it it scales atop its head like goes away and then uh it like hit 
he like an explosion of hair psh, appears kind of like your hair until finally it fully transforms and in front of you you see a you see a mini lumi um appears also transforms slowly into like a first with like the tail and the wings using the medium size. Medium size. You transform into a dragon also? Into a fairy dragon. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. So we got a whole switcheroo here. Uh, at this point the the fairy dragon is so excited because you're playing with it and it's like beep, 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 spins around you but it's it's like a mini lumi flying around you right beep, 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 beep. and then all of them get excited because they also want in on the action so even more mini lumis appear let me just just add more of you. But yeah. So Pirwal asks next, what what will we do about these dragons? Then I talk to Ezra. I ask her, what what should we do about this dragon? Um. Are they? Friendly? Ezra, Ezra says that um, they can be friendly, but we just have to be careful not to rile them up too much. Uh, and she also expresses that um, there are they might not be the only uh, fairy dragons here. So you have to be careful. And so don't play with them too much? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, we and then... Go. Yeah. Then we should move forward. Ezra continues okay. moving forward. Lumi doesn't know that, and he's just like, like dancing around. Mm -hmm. Fairy dragons as well. Okay. Everyone, follow, please. Lumi, please uh, make. Hmm. Because Lumi's too high. <laughs> Lumi's too high, and then he's playing with the dragons. What is Astra oh doing? God. What are Astra and Harubi doing? Oh uh, Astra is just kind of like petting her dragon. Okay. Uh, but um, just like sort of like in a I have a pretty pretty crown way and she's just kind of like I don't know um, twirling and like sometimes leaping like like how a <laughs> like how a I don't know six year old girl in like ballet class would yeah. kind of like move sometimes. Okay. Okay. But very like heavy footfalls because Astra. Yeah, like, it's it's really not it's yeah. not graceful. It's like fully, fully armored <laughs> like dragon Yeah, boards. it's clanking. It's like boosh, boosh, boosh. Think, 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 boosh, 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 like going around. Harubid, what's Harubid doing? Uh, so like I'm I'm kind of petting the 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 dragon creatures. Uh -huh. uh, the fairy dragons. I'm like. I'm you remind me of my. <laughs> I, I have a cat just like you. <laughs> <laughs> but you, cat. <laughs> you are less scratchy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I rub its belly and I can hear it purr, like. Okay. When you're doing that sound. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lumi. Well. What? Like, like prestigation, like fancy lights, and then starts playing on his lute. However, that is possible with um, and like, uh, plays, like playful music. Uh huh. 
Okay. Hang on, I need to make some rolls. Make some rolls. Boom, boom. Ah. This one, okay, that one. I'll make. I need to make rolls. Can I tell Nix to uh, uh, basically plan that I I can get Haru into the wolf and you push the others forward. Mm -hmm. So I basically hey. nudge and bring Haru on top of Dorin. <laughs> <laughs> okay here's <laughs> here's the thing um the fairy dragons that lumi has been playing with i had them make wisdom saving throws to see if they get too excited right oh my god oh no um Fortunately, two of them saved with rolling a 20 and then a, an 11. This is just 10. But then the one rolled a nat one. Uh, so he is freaking... This this one dragon is freaking out. Uh, Which dragon? Uh, the one, one mini Lumi? The, yeah, <laughs> one, one of the mini Lumis. Oh. Got it. <laughs> okay so the one mini lumi gets so super excited he's like meep, 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 meep. and then like sh screams so loud meep, 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 meep. and then he explodes oh my god he explodes <laughs> like a gremlin like, like the bird in fiona oh yeah <laughs> Uh, this one explodes and then I need to make saves for the rest of them so those were the three so there are five left after the explosion one two three four five another three of them also get excited I'll oh say my god a Astra the one about the one on Astra's head explodes and then and, and then as Harobid has been like put on top of Torin uh this this fairy dragon falls and is like what is it over and then gets angry and then explodes and then uh this one over here that's just watching explodes as well got got too excited just by watching from far away and then these two just like uh like run run oh shit no. that's what genocide genocide poof poof uh, what have we one. done this poof i'm sorry i'm too high too high do they need like a body or something um do they leave a body? No, they do not. Uh, they explode in a puff of pink and purple smoke. Um, I bring the pink and purple smoke or dust into the leaf. Oh my. Thing, but I had the rest of them. You put it in what? The leaves. Ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, with all these explosions happening, five of them. Poof, 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 poof. Ezra stops in her tracks and then looks angrily at the party, but you guys don't see. But Nick sees this. And mm. then Ezra makes eye contact with Nick. And then mm. Nick and yeah. Firwal, you guys start to hear a rumble, like <laughs> a very low growl. <sighs> And then Ezra, still maintaining eye contact with Nyx, 
she disappears. Oh no. Uh, oh no. Farewell, do you hear that? And then you guys you see me? in the distance. Uh, what by, do I need to do to I do un, I to know this? <laughs> if I do if if I have an idea what the growl is about. Oh, nature check, please. Can I cast calm emotions on the group to see uh, if it can help with the high? Sure. High thing? Oh my god. I cast uh, calm emotions. I do not. I do not know. It's a very. It's a growl that you're not familiar with. Uh, nothing similar to any of the creatures you faced before. Uh, but actually, that might be incorrect. It sounds familiar to like a creature you've fought before, you've faced before, but maybe because you're in the Feywild, it's slightly it different. It sounds different. Yeah. Mm. So that kind of throws you off a little bit. But you have the suspicion that it's something you know. Uh... And Nyx cast calm emotions, right? And try to hit the three who are high. Okay. Uh, what does that do? You attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people. Each human nudging a 24 figures face and I'm going to with rain rain must make a charisma saving throw. A creature can choose to fail the saving throw as it wishes. If a creature fails to save it, so choose when we follow Okay, okay, okay. Sex. Okay. Uh, Astra, Harubid, and Lumi, when, while Nyx is casting the spell on you, do you guys want to stop being high? Uh, I think, like, deep down inside, after the, the, the fairy dragon kind of, like, disappears <laughs> and she sees the others, like, I think deep down inside, Astra is like, there's something this shouldn't be and like okay. her, her her rationality would probably say like you need to sober up okay so you snap out, out of it Astra, be wise <laughs> <laughs> so you snap out of it how about harubid and lumi deep inside lumi is the best thing to see this playmates go go boom go poof <laughs> Okay, so all of you want to snap out of it. So you guys, sure. yes. you yes. guys snap out of it. And then in the distance by this tree, you guys thought you were looking at, like when you were looking at the trunk of the tree, you thought you were looking at uh, just the trunk, right? And the bark. And then suddenly the bark moves. Ooh. As if a large creature hugging and like... Uh, staying on the side of this tree remained unseen and camouflaged right suddenly begins to move and creep downwards a very large creature and then you see as it boosh, boosh, steps onto the ground and its head tilts around and forward to look at you. You recognize what it is as you see a dragon. Oh my god. What? It's a dragon. This. All right. Uh, it stays there. Uh, on the ground, inches forward a little bit, but holds its ground there, staring intently at your entire group. And these uh, fairy dragons over here on the side are... Is that the mama dragon? <laughs> are are kind of like just looking at the dragon, looking at you, and then they, they like perch themselves onto like a leaf. And they're kind of they're like wagging their tails excited to see what's gonna happen oh man <laughs> <laughs> but uh this dragon lies still for a bit what do you guys do 
uh, Astra. Mira, Mira, go, go. Astra. Maybe you can speak to it. <laughs> Do we sense any threats from it? Uh, roll insight. Yeah, can like, I roll insight too? Sure. Do I have the presentation just as a... You have what? <laughs> what? I'm still a baby dragon. Nine, uh, 19. <laughs> Ooh, 27. Okay, good rolls. <laughs> <coughs> Lumi, 17. Okay, very good rolls. You do not sense uh, immediate hostility or aggression from this dragon. More like uh, territorial. Um, <laughs> Astra will um, try to speak in draconic. Uh, and she'll speak in draconic and then she will say, Hey there! Uh, <clears throat> Greetings, like because like the the highness is still wearing off. Um, she's like, greetings. We are but wanderers in this forest, and we apologize if we have may have tres trespassed. Um, we mean no harm. We just wish to be on our way. It it lies very still. Um. When you spoke to it, you noticed a very slight tilt in its head as if to adjust its hearing. And after speaking, saying that, uh, it just stays very, very still. But it has not adjusted its form at all. It looks like, it looks like, you know, it's, it's, wi it's widened its, paw, its uh, footing, right? Uh, to seem mm -hmm. even larger and then its wings are kind of like uh flared outwards uh and its its head is like down low onto the ground uh it does not move from that uh position but it does Astra but outside of that it doesn't do anything else um as a dragonborn would astra have any extra knowledge about like if this is a like what type of personality this type of dragon would have okay one thing for sure uh for sure though is uh this is the oldest dragon that all of you have seen and like ve it looks very very old uh something that's shocking because in the material world in the material plane um there you guys have not seen a dragon like older than the oldest one you encountered was uh Yurzadel's brother, right? Yeah. This one seems like thousands of years older than than yeah. than than that. Probably tens of thousands of years older. And um, for Astra's knowledge, probably not as a dragonborn, but because of your studies in the Mistral Temple and uh, maybe from, from, I uh, know, you grew up in the Mistral Temple. Uh, I don't know. I, I think... The Mistral Temple would not have information about dragons within the Feywilds. Got it. Um, Astra will just go based off of the general knowledge that she has of dragons on the material plane and that they can be very vain creatures. And she says, We are but lowly travelers that mean no harm at all especially in one such powerful presence as yours and she tries to speak up <laughs> because she's she thinks that the dragon couldn't hear her the first time such a majestic presence we are so honored to be in it truly such a privilege to be in front of such a 
majestic creature, though we are not worthy of staying here and we should be on our way. <laughs> um, you pipe up louder and whatever. At this point, the fairy dragons that are perched up on on the leaf over here, uh, they are now like lying down on the leaves like as if they're you know they're like cinema seats and then they have like <laughs> a handful of berries that they're eating like popcorn uh, oh crap and then after all of that astra uh this hey, dragon I, um, what up chloe well, Astro was talking to the dragon. I wanted to try to detect the dragon's thoughts. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. It says food. <laughs> Shit. You cast a spell. Concentration to saving throw. May I, may I do it? And I'm using no verbal somatic components because it's one of my features. So I can just use wait ah. can we see it's my first time using it yes please check yep. when you cast the, 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 it requires no verbal or somatic components cool so i just you know very n no one knows i cast the spell sure uh and then does it have to make a saving throw uh, uh, first, if can I surface thoughts? I think no. Wait, let me see. Interesting. If I probe deeper as a mind game, I'm saving throw. I think for the duration, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures when you cast a spell in your action. And it's yeah. My saving throw. Uh, if I think I probe deeper. The deeper. Thoughts. Okay, hang on. Hang on while I clarify. Yeah, if you probe deeper, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. You read the thoughts of the one who You mm -hmm. can focus your mind on a creature. If a creature you choose an 803 or lower doesn't speak, and the creature is unaffected. Surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind in that moment. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so you hear in this mind. Read the thoughts of certain creatures. Is it a language? Do you have to mm. understand a language that it speaks? I do not. Okay. Uh, okay, sure. Anyway, uh, I'll just do it this way. What, what does it speak, man? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> but, okay. but it... Its thoughts, its thinking is along the lines of trespassers, uh... Uh, non fey uh, do not belong here along those lines mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. danger be careful that mentality those are its thoughts right now okay. and then after Astra uh, spoke that whole uh, her whole thing in draconic the beast i know the dragon will adjust its footing a little bit uh actually no it's not gonna move its feet at all it's just gonna rear up to be a, a little bit more relaxed its wings are gonna slowly come down and its head is gonna rise up and its chin its chin is going to tilt upwards to to rem rem uh, retain its dominance, right? And then it tilts its head down. It opens its mouth and exhales. And then surprisingly, you hear a voice. You hear her, you hear the creature say, 
save your flattery. It will not serve you well here. Uh, Astra is still a little bit like, like she's the the effects are still wearing off. So like she she seems a little bit flustered, um, and she says. But she also, like, relaxes a little bit. Her hand that was just the tiniest bit up, as if to, like, signal something to her friends, uh, drops. And then she, this time, sincerely bows, and she says, uh, The ways of the Feywild are very strange to us, but I guarantee you that we did not mean to trespass at all. Our guide seems to have disappeared. And um, we merely have found our way here to help. There have been strange occurrences in our world, and we wanted to know if the same has been happening here in the Feywild. Your guide's right here, by the way, Nix. Oh, oh no, no, uh, Ezra. You don't we see Ezra. See her. We don't know. Yeah. What's happening? Okay, uh, but in any case. Um, <clears throat> The dragon uh, will sit down on her hind legs and then kind of like go to a more relaxed position as if a dog sitting, right? And then it's going to say, Come closer, strangers. I cannot see very well anymore. Uh, Astra will whisper for everyone to like come like we need to get closer she requires us to get closer yeah she speaks in draconic but some words don't uh, don't automatically get registered in your head Astra because it's a very like an an ancient version of draconic right so there's some yeah yeah, it's like you have to translate some few words or like use context clues to understand her yeah, it's like listening to like Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Astro will whisper for everyone to come closer to the dragon, but also spread out <laughs> <laughs> and not in a diagonal line. You <laughs> look very beautiful, dragon. I said, save your flattery. Okay. <laughs> all right um you guys gather around sure and then <clears throat> the dragon will say i do not care for your troubles in the material plane for it is not my home and for the problems we have here It is because of trespassers like you. Trespassers like you who have awoken our guardians and have caused them to wreak havoc within the Feywilds. You are all the same. It is not enough Uh, for you. It is not enough for you to merely reap on the resources of your own world why must you come over to our plane and reap the resources here steal from us uh astra knows right that um uh uh fair can speak draconic does only Astra understand all this? Hmm? Does only Astra understand? I, I can understand what you're saying. Yeah. What she's saying. Yeah, it's draconic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I understand it. <laughs> so Fearwell will just say, but that is not our doing. That is not why we are here. We are here to help. And if they are bothering and they have ill intent, 
That is exactly the reason why we are sent here. Mm. Astro will translate this to, to the crew. Uh, yeah. Mm. I do not know if I can trust you. Why should I believe the words of strangers and outsiders? Is there any possible way that we could prove our sincerity? You could leave. And the guardians will continue to wreak havoc. Who can stop them if not us? The guardians will go back to sleep once they have defeated whatever creatures have trespassed here. May we know what creatures have trespassed here aside from us? I do not know. I have not met trespassers for a very long time. You are the first in hundreds or thousands of years. The other trespassers are not here. <laughs> She's basically telling you that um, she hasn't met the other trespassers, so she can't answer you that question. Do you know like, a general place of where would, would they be or someone who might be? If I tell you this, you will go there, yes? Since they came from our plane, it is our responsibility to stop them. Not all of us from the same plane are the same kind. Mm. The dragon moves closer towards you, Nyx. Gives you a sniff. And then exhales in your face. <sighs> you are... A curious is one. Is it hot or cold breath? Uh, hmm. Very interesting question. I don't know. Uh, I want to say it's hot. Would you say it's a acidic? <laughs> no, it's not acidic. Uh, this is not. This is not a green or. This is not a green dragon. <clears throat> it's a. It. Fe, it's a fey dragon. Uh, it is hot, Nyx. Yeah, okay. it, and then it's like, she says, "You are a curious one. You smell of the uh, the, you smell of the material plane, but also of this one." Um, a patron who I believe also lives in this plane. And based on my reading, my ancestors, some of them, might have come from this plane as well. But I now live in the material plane. And then I am here to assist them since I have connections to this area. This is very curious. I am curious. So, a descendant of the Fae who lives in the material plane is choosing to help strangers of our lands who in turn would like to help us. Yes. That's why we're here. We were sent to help. This alliance is new to me. Wow, that must be shocking since how long you must have lived 
It is good to experience new things. That means there is more to life than how you've lived so far. I disagree. New is not good. New is trouble. New is often destruction and war and change is... And she shakes her head. New can be not good, but it can also be good sometimes. There's always good and bad in the world. It's okay. If I let you pass, leave from here without me destroying you, you will swear to me that you will fend off these other trespassers. And once that is finished, you will leave this place yourself. Hello? Cross my heart. Cross our heart. We swear, right? Everyone? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yes, that is still groggy, uh, but yeah. said yes, yeah. It is not our business to save your world. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Mm. I know it is not our business to defend this realm, but in so do we. We are also protecting our own. I believe we can be of help to each other. And once we finish, you will never see us again. Very well. You may leave me. The guardians are, and then she, she points with her, with her head uh, this way <clears throat> as she turns in that direction. Make haste. If I see that you have not left here in within the next few days, I will track you down and I will kill you myself. So you guys proceed. However, <clears throat> Fearwell, as you proceed forward and then you pass the dragon, you hear or you feel a tug. Uh, a tug in your heart and maybe your bow. And the the voice of your grandfather in your head. You hear him say, this dragon. No. Ah. <laughs> uh. Can I? So I'll I'll go near Astra and I will say. It does not seem that we can trust this dragon. Astra whispers back uh, in common. Um, uh, how can you tell? It is hard to explain. It will only sound weird if I tell you that I have voices in my head that tell it to be so. Uh, Astra nods slowly and she says, Do you think that if we turn our backs, he will, the dragon will attack us? 
That is what I feel. Astra will nod and she will say, I think it would be best if we pretend to be on our way, but be on our guard. I um, think that's a sound plan. <laughs> my my detect thoughts is was still up during that time. Did I did I hear like any thoughts when when oh, I was okay. talking to the dragon? Um uh, very distrustful thoughts like if you guys don't tr- don't trust the dragon, the dragon d- definitely doesn't trust you as well. So as you guys okay. are leaving um, part of the dragon hopes that you will keep your word, right? Mm. Uh, but part of the dragon is also kind of like preparing and planning like, okay, if, they, if they're still here within the next few days, I will kill them. It's like that. Okay, okay. I, I just, I say to Astra in her head, I guess we should move on and not disturb the dragon anymore uh astra will nod and then uh she'll like keep walking but she'll just make sure to sort of like whisper to her part to the party like walk away but keep on your guard um and i will just tell astra that I tell you though, be prepared, because if we leave now, I know this is not the last time we see this dragon. Astra was... She will hunt us down and still kill us regardless. Astra nods and she says, This could very well be true. However, I do not think that our our chances of survival are at... uh, are very high right now. It would be better for us to choose when we fight. Wouldn't we best be prepared next time? <laughs> I am fighting an ancient dragon. <laughs> All right. The dragon just watches you guys carefully as you continue walking. These fairy dragons are kind of disappointed that a fight did not happen. Yeah, they're, th- they're throwing berries at you guys. <laughs> right, dragon remains vigilant. Okay. All right, you guys move on upwards. Yes. Oh no. All right, sure. You guys make your way. And far away <laughs> enough, far away enough so that the dragon blends even further into the tree line. It's camouflage um, doing uh, its effect as it climbs back onto the side of this tree and holds onto the side of the tree with its arms and its wings and uh, blends perfectly with the tree as you can no longer see the dragon uh, you continue and make your way through the fey wilds uh, almost almost uh, dragon meat <laughs> but with some careful actions and conversation you manage to uh, avoid uh, a violent interaction and with that, the Feywilds get denser and denser. Its forests become much harsher. If, if a few days ago, uh, a lot of the creatures stay away from you, you are now encountering uh, ones that are more willing to stay near you. More fairy dragons and like fey versions of displacer beasts and and blink dogs uh you do get into a few fights with these creatures and uh, you camp 
ev- uh, every night when you're able to rest until you find yourself uh, close to uh, where you hear a heavy footfalls and what seem to be what sounds like uh, combat uh, it sounds like combat between like large creatures and that is where we're going to end tonight's session. Yay! All right. If, that was crazy. <laughs> if Erzy was here, we'd be fighting the damn dragon. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. yeah. he, he tried to, like, you're mine. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my mirror? <laughs> All right, I'll GG. Share, I'll, I'll share, though, that, like, uh, I know that Fairlock doesn't care much about dragons, really. He's like, yeah. he, he wants to eradicate and all of that. No, but it goes against Fearwell's <laughs> kind of internal growth to just up and attack just yeah. because someone tells him to do so. <laughs> yes, character growth. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, and with that, you guys level up to eleven. Oh my god! Is... Oh my gosh! Oh, uh, Wayne, can I say yep. that from the level up, like during the time that she visited Alfalge and stuff, that Astra yeah. has like sort of like caught up on some like battle style things, and I'll yeah, I'll do like a dip into fighter. Yes, yeah, sir. That's great. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Do she it. is not a strong person. I just want a little bit of action surgery surge. That's cool. All right, so you guys level up to 11. Uh, and yeah, oh my god. Oh, uh, So above game knowledge for you guys and other players playing in the world of Tarin, uh, it is very rare to meet a dragon with intellect and who can yeah. converse <laughs> because uh, since pandemonium when dragons were bred for war and the uh, old ones uh, were either slaughtered or uh, driven away and you know they decided to go into hiding uh, dragons that have been around Taryn are ones that are not very smart, you know, all they know is war. Uh, so for your group to have been able to meet one that can speak and one that can, that's like as old as this one, it's a, it's a crazy experience. I'm so glad we, that we talked to it and we didn't fight it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that DJ is a flight today. <laughs> <laughs> he really is going to be like the Thanos of dragons. <laughs> like, um, with the whole fairy dragons things, the one that we had the hallucinations with, we know we shouldn't play with them. Yeah. But we were yeah. Too- <laughs> Wanna, yeah ancient, but like very old. Very like old. It would be so... Did the dragon have a name, or do we find that out later? You didn't ask. <laughs> oh damn it! We should have asked. <laughs> yeah, but it is. It it's common. It's what? You didn't understand common. You didn't try to speak in common. I mean, I, we, I think I don't know. Anyone was speaking in common. I don't know You guys were speaking in common when you were so far away. Me, was in particular, I don't know. Wait. Next, oh. I know Astrid Fear and Draconic, but I was speaking of them. Oh, um, it, I don't know. Oh, you can roll an insight check for me right now. Roll an insight check for me. I don't think this last time we see this. 24, pretty good. Um, when you guys were would like con, con, uh, 
converse with each other while in its presence it does not it would not seem like it it would get confused by what your language you know what what language you were using it just it seemed like it just chose to speak in ancient draconic Maybe that's one smart dragon. Very smart. Yep. Very, very smart. All right. Uh, with that, what else do I need to say before we wrap this up? So that's session one for Fearwall's arc. Uh, I was actually really prepared for this fight to happen. Uh, oh, were you? I was. I, I really, I really, really thought that oh, like no. you wanted us to talk uh, talk out of it. No, no, no. I was, I was just uh, ready uh, for whatever you guys decide to do. Um, <laughs> but you, I had like I love is that something like uh, this is the oldest dragon you ever seen. You've never seen someone. I was like, yeah. and a lot of us were like, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm not fucking fighting that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, like not after watching Critical Role, Pagyud. <laughs> well, no. no. I had I had its character sheet ready. I mean, its stat block ready. Like I knew. It was ready. No, 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 no. It's a. It is a. Oh, you never know. We we could we could be walk making our way back through the Feywild and and. He'll want to eat us or something. Yeah, like, yeah. you're still here. <laughs> Quite possible. <laughs> but yeah. I thought I told you to go. Thank you so much, Wayne. Right. GG, good night. GG, good night, guys. Thank you, Chloe, for guesting. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 All right, and that was um, Wolf's Guard, Episode 3. Uh, first session for Fearwell's character arc. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Much love. Peace.